23 waves, treasury officially maxed. Um, this isn't necessarily the maximum possible score. If I'd gotten fewer dwarf lords, I could get even higher than 2907. But it is the maximum number of waves. To do this, you need to have a devil that can kill the entire first wave instantly on the first tick. Now, this isn't as hard as you might think it is. Um, emblems are key, of course. You have to use POA for this. Maybe not if you have a level 40 crack hack adjutant. None of the other emblems are going to work because of the four sets of penetration. The units don't have any defense, so it allows the penetration to go negative and allows it to do enough damage to kill them, even though it's only supposed to do like half a percent of their hit points. Um, and then the rest for mastery level C's happen to be perfect cast. This is my badass emblem set. It doesn't, you don't need a mastery level 55 here. It's really handy, obviously. It's awesome, I fucking love it, but you don't need it necessarily to kill waves in a single tick. The holy emblem attack and the penetration are, are big. That's what. We are interrupting your scheduled programming to bring you a demonstration of much weaker emblems wiping dwarf waves in a single tick. So you can see here I swapped out those level 9 POA emblems for level 1 POA emblems. Um, I do still have the stronger Broken Prophecy in there, but my effective mastery level is 20 instead of 55. If you bring all the support units and do the other stuff I'm about to mention in this video, um, you absolutely can wipe these waves without crazy emblems. So don't just assume you can't. Emblems on everybody else do not matter, except for Everlasting Secret on the ones I mentioned. So you want to put your strongest emblems, besides the ones on the devil, on your support troops to boost the support bonus. To squeeze every little bit out to make sure if you can't quite kill them all in one take. So then melee units that can buff your devil's withering in this situation. Bone Dragon for aging, global damage reduction reduction. Um, to maximize value from him, you'd use Everlasting Secret to level that up. Uh, Revy, because of this one, all friendly units get increase in unit damage, attack speed, crit damage, the unit damage is what matters. Nightmare for this skill here. Mine's not leveled up, I just have him for DI. But even at level, at about 3 star, it's 5.5% unit damage. It's still for the first 20 seconds, so... Um, even if you can't kill all the waves with the ticks, that could get you jump-started on the first wave for Sandro. Dwarf was boosting his withering. They may have changed it. I've re read somewhere. Um, the withering is not based on the devil's hit points. I think so, too. But it's definitely not. I've tested that. And so this is supposed to increase unit damage here by 10.5%. It boosts a little bit with Everlasting Secret. I'm not sure if it still works. Spartan Warriors, um, your attack speed doesn't matter, but if they die, they will die from your Death Rebel. So when they do, that's 4 times 5% is 20% damage reduction. Or excuse me, unit damage. And Sprite for the mana. And yeah, starting mana increases by 22 and 0.7. Naga is Naga is probably the most important to bring if you're just trying to if you can't quite wipe the first wave on the first tick because of this one here increases crit damage for all offensive units um, for wiping the entire wave though we're killing them without critting them so this does not matter if you can tick the whole first wave otherwise this is really important to get the most out of the first wave to get the most chances for cooldown reduction. For the remainder of your, your troops, you are going for support, so um, we got an Inferno guy here, Imp, doesn't matter which one, and then the rest in support. Now we can't bring Gog or um, Afridi because they're range, so that gets up to 6% unit damage for Inferno units. Then I got Mummy and Black Knight coming along as well for this Magic Emissary for another... 5% uh, unit damage. You can't get any more Magic Emissaries or Inferno because of melee only limitation. And then the offensive unit one is like um, against defensive units, so it doesn't apply. For adjutants, Crag Hack is huge. With my killer emblems, I could already do it without them. But uh, the extra penetration, because they have no defense, penetration is going negative. It's the only reason that tiny percent hit point damage is even killing them in the first place. Um, also, Kendall for unit 
damage for offensive units. And then for the final one, it doesn't matter. I don't think there's any. None of the ones I have benefit, and Xeron doesn't, wouldn't either. And in addition to all that, there's always other boosts like uh, battle formation rosters and so on. So once your devil kills everything in a withering tick, you'd think, hey, they wave spawn every four seconds, withering's every two seconds, I'm good to go. But you still won't get the 23rd wave. I'm going to do a run here where I just let the devil kill everything to demonstrate why. So the first wave instantly dies at 130. Second wave spawn, four seconds later at 126. Devil's withering doesn't hit till two seconds later approximately. Now from here on out, the devil's going to kill every wave basically instantly. So you can see here, I've got it zoomed in. Right as it changes to 09 to 08, they're going to spawn and die. They actually spawn in the last frame of 09 and die in the first frame of 08. Now I'm going to do a frame by frame. That's the last frame of 09. That's the first frame of 08. So you can see I've let a few more frames after that go. I'm not sure exactly when the points accrue. It might be right in that first frame of 08, but it is not during 09. So waves spawn four seconds after the previous one dies. Withering's every two seconds, which is force visible by two. So the withering and the death of the units does happen instantly, but for the very first one, the game can't measure anything happening in a match 0, 0.0 seconds in, the match hasn't started yet. Um, so whatever the smallest amount of time the game measures, like say a tenth of Well, I'll get into that in a minute. The result of is here, on the final wave, I even use Death Ripple to try and kill it. Um, you see my score is 2700, and I'm going to go in frame by frame again here. You can see the wave appear. But the timer takes to zero, zero. Score stays 2,700, don't kill any of them. But I didn't even have to do anything, and you can easily get 2,800 like that, and, you know, max rewards, probably get first on your server. But I want to get that wave, too, because that's how I fucking roll. So what I was saying before about the smallest amount of time the game registers, nothing can die, nothing can change from alive to dead at zero, so the game is going to register, the first wave is dying at zero point X. And the timer for the wave spawning is based on the time the previous wave died, as opposed to tied to the beginning of the match, like the Devil's Withering. So the Devil's Withering ticks at 4 seconds, but the wave just barely misses it, spawns at 4.x seconds. Then it lives for 2 seconds and die, lining themselves back up with Withering ticks, which go off every 2 seconds, and every other one instantly kills a wave as it spawns for the rest of the match. Leaving you one frame shy of that elusive 23rd wave. You somewhat ironically can't let the Devil kill any more units other than the first wave. You have to kill the second wave before the Devil's Withering does, and then every wave after that before the Devil's with Withering does. That's the two seconds leeway you have. So in this run I killed a portion of the second wave before the but Devil's Withering did and continued to do so with offensive spells while cloning the Devil. The clones are really important because otherwise I'd have to have cooldowns, mana, everything to precisely and instantly kill waves 23 times in a row with spells. As opposed to here, where uh, you can see I have a clone devil killing them, or part of them, before the original devil even ticks. In fact, since I recorded it, I could even isolate it as this uh, clone right here. Because when it disappears here, after it's 30 seconds is up, apparently none of the other clones have their withering ticking in between that one and the original devil. And you can see here, they all start dying at the same time, which means I'm going to miss it by frame and quit. Which brings us finally to an actual 23 wave run. So you can see I have Death Ripple marked, which I'm going to use to kill the second wave. Technically, you don't even need a mark spell for this, because you could get an instant clone that you can cast right away at the beginning. And the very first clone you make is going to shave at least some time off that two seconds wasted. If you get lucky and get it up early enough, because sometime in the two seconds between the second wave spawning and the original Devil's Withering killing it, the clone's withering will tick and keeping you ahead of that timer. Now, preferably, it saves you a second and a half instead of half of a second. Because the clones only last 30 seconds, so you're going to need at least three of them to get you to the end. So if the first clone to start killing waves before the original clone, if it saves you, say, a second, and when that ends, there needs to be another clone alive that is cracking its withering in the second in between that one and the original one. And then when that one disappears, you need a third one withering in between that one and the original one. Obviously, the more clones you can spit out, the more likely it is that you're going to have one there. Now, in this particular run, it's really close to the, to the deadline, but I could still tell by the naked eye. But the first time I did it, it was close to a second. I was ahead of schedule, so to speak. It's very easy to tell. And of course, since you have two runs a day, you can always risk it on the first one. If you can't tell for sure if you're ahead.
And as I mentioned a couple times, technically Sandro should be capable of doing this, but a luck he can cast his ult every four seconds here. I haven't seen any 2900 plus scores, you'd have to have insanely good timing. Whereas Clone Devils will kill a wave exactly every four seconds and without any input from you. And it actually didn't take a whole lot of tries to, to do it the second time here for the video. You can see my score is 45 lower because I got five more Dwarf Lords. At this point, there's no possible way to even spawn any more waves, so it just comes down to Dwarf Lords. Both my runs, as you can see from the math on the screen, are within the ballpark average. Anyhow, I've been real busy. I have a bunch of half-finished videos, which I'm testing on a lot of weapons and more DI stuff. Um, but in the meantime, happy dwarf hunting and thanks for watching.